Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh! We live in a life pod. Under the sea. Chucky and Harry and Smelly is here. If that from the ocean be something you wish. Off it some now to get around like a fish. Ready? Big bear, no pants. Big bear, no pants. Big bear, no Okay, I think that's enough brain damage for now. So how have you been, homies? Me? I've been swimming under the big blue, searching and seeking and scanning its greatest mysteries. And now that I popped out for air, let me tell you my friend about a small marine gemstone called Subnautica Below Zero. It sure looks like a beauty, but is it as true of a gem as its predecessor? Or is it merely glinting the lights back of the original? Boom, boom, boom. For those of you not familiar with the now series, published by Unknown Worlds Entertainment, the original Subnautica came out in early 2018. And the second entry, Subnautica Below Zero, was just released this year, 2021. Below Zero was initially conceived as a DLC, but the project soon immensely outgrew itself. So it was decided that it should be released as a standalone title. Both games were available as early access titles long before their releases, so you could potentially peek into what the games were all about at a discount price if you so wished. The two releases feature four game modes. Survival, aka Normie mode, American mode, Minecraft mode, and True Master Gamer mode. Where if you die, you lose all your progress and have to start from the beginning. Which definitely isn't one of the reasons this review took so long. Fucking hell. Now this video is mostly going to be about the newer title, Subnautica Below Zero and how it holds up to its forerunner. But let's begin by briefly talking about what the original game is. Oh and quick note, you know what this is? No? That's because it's a spoiler and you won't see any major spoilers in this video. It was a sea cucumber by the way. So Subnautica 2018 is a first-person open-world action-adventure survival game, according to the wiki at least, but that's a lot of words, isn't it? I think survival exploration describes it better, so for short, let's stick with Sexploration Game. The story is as simple as it gets. Your starship called Aurora crash lands on planet 4546b, a planet covered almost entirely by ocean. And as the sole survivor, you must, well, soul survive some more. In the process, you will also uncover what caused the tragedy of the Aurora and eventually find your way back into the stars and escape your wet nightmare. Along your adventure, you'll come across blueprints for cool gadgets that you can construct with the help of your trusty fabricator, a device that lets you rearrange matter on an atomic level, making things out of raw materials. Something straight out of Star Trek, basically. My peeper. Lubricant. This is my peeper. And lubricant. Fascinating. You can also construct a couple of vehicles, all suited for different situations, and a sea base which you get to expand and decorate to your own liking. The play area itself is divided up into several sections called biomes, and you can freely visit any part you'd like right from the beginning. Although, you are depleting food, hydration, and mostly, oxygen levels will likely steer you towards constructing better gear or modes of transportation first. These biomes all have different flora, fauna, and ferocious finned fiends lying in wait for you. There's the Mushroom Kingdom, Blue Ball Land, Floating Greasy Ball Land, and yeah, I really don't want to get into what these fleshy, pink, gaping fungi remind me of. So that's the original in a nutshell. It's fun to explore, it's exciting, 
It's fresh like the salty sea breeze in the morning. And it even gets scary, or thrilling would be more accurate. Overall, Grandpa Subnautica, no less than a king amongst exploration games. So, is Below Zero able to hold a burning flare to its precursor? Too long, didn't watch. Whoa. Yes, but, and dear viewer, I would like to urge you to keep on watching with your eyes if you'd like to peer deeper into this particular but. So let's get our feet wet and look at how the story differs first. Below Zero takes place some years after the original. This time, you take on the role of Robin Ayu, by profession, a xenologist. That just means she's really into some kinky alien stuff. You come in search of your older sister, who seemingly suffered a fatal accident on planet 4546b. At least, according to the notice you got from Altera, the company your sister was working for. But you smell something… fishy going on. So you decide to descend on the planet's surface to seek out the truth about your lost sibling. And then everything goes to shit and you crash land. So how do the stories compare? Crash landing? Check. Starting with next to nothing? Check. Only a life pod at your service with a single fabricator? Check and double check. I mean, I understand, it's a survival game. You need to be alone, stripped of your equipment. But come on, do you really have to crash land in every single survival game that's out there? Then again, it could be worse. It could be. Hey, you. Finally away. This time though, there's a bit more to unravel than just a simple escape from the planet. Not only will you find out through exploring what happened to your sister, but you will also come across an enigmatic stranger and become inseparable friends. Uh oh, sound the spoiler bell matey, or whatever they have on boats, cause minor story plot is inbound port side. Ready? This stranger is of alien in nature, and will need your assistance to, literally, pull himself together. Because he has no name, at least none that you would understand, he decides to dub himself, so you can address him. You will append your seed curve to my species designation. Please call me Al Am. My whole life I've been dying to meet a sapient space-fearing alien up close, and you're telling me your name is... Alan? And that's... That's the joke. And yeah, I, I get it, I get the joke. It's like Tim the wizard from Monty Python. What manner of man are you that can summon up fire without flint or tinder? I am an enchanter. By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Tim? Alan? Tim Allen? It's the same drill. But you can already see where I'm going with this. Some of this supposedly humorous dialogue kinda falls flat on his butt cheeks. It's not meant to be an overly quirky game, but the first one had some solid jokes. Just listen to these golden lines. Congratulations, survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. <laughs> see? That's hilarious. Now listen to one from Below Zero. In the control room, you can change base lighting and colors, rename your base, and see information about power and structural integrity. But not the integrity of societal power structures. What does that even mean? Is this some inside joke? Or was that some clever social commentary I didn't get? Why would a PD even say that? Imagine if your phone did that to you. Hey Google, can, can you order me a pizza? I will order you a pizza. What toppings would you like? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some salmon, honey and blueberries? Would you like some? Systematic oppression. On top? Uh, what? No man, just, just get me my pizza, alright? Your pizza has been ordered. It will arrive at the time you stop exploiting the working class. Dude, what is wrong with you? 
The means of production rightfully belongs to the people. Rise up, proletariat. So yeah, there are some critical social remarks in there. There's the evil corporation who cares about nothing but profits, the badass female supporting character, and some gay dudes and gals sprinkled on top to create that perfect blend of a Netflix original. And while it's far from subtle, it's not annoyingly in your face, so it gets a pass. Overall, the story in Below Zero is still one of the weaker points of the game, but it's loads more than what the first one had to offer. Where the game shines is at its core gameplay, exploring the unknown and often terrifying void below you. And how does exploring differ in Below Zero? Well, really it doesn't. Which is a good thing, right? If the feeling of exploration was amazing in the first game, and if it's not different in this one, that means it's still as great as ever, correct? Well, kind of. You see, part of the magic of the first one stemmed from the Forrest Gump effect. My mom always said, life was like the horrifying depths of the abyss. You never know what you're gonna get. What I mean by that is for the first time, it was exhilarating to build out your little base, your vehicles, and to venture always a little deeper under the ocean. It got darker, bigger, more intimidating and aggressive creatures were introduced, and you usually salvage more interesting technology. Below Zero does more of the same. In the same manner, at the same pace. If you play the original, you've already learned the ropes by now. I've come to the realization pretty early on that I won't be able to relive that sense of thrill and wonder I had when I first the one in 2018. The buzz I got from exploring something new this time wore off rapidly. I knew what to expect in the next biome, what upgrade is important to get first, and when the next giant predator will try to swallow me whole. Yar, swallow me whole! My expectations perfectly met reality. In fact, too perfectly. With that said, it's still fun to swim around and explore, but it's kind of like dried cat food that was left open in a mildly humid place. Still tastes okay, but that initial crunchy feeling is just gone. So is there anything new in the realm of exploration that the recent game offers? Why yes, you get to cover more land in Below Zero. And by land, I mean actual dry land. A significant part of the game takes place on snowy hills and plains, where two new elements come into play, not previously featured in the original. One is your own body heat, which is a new necessity you have to manage while above water, and it's kind of fun honestly. It depletes very rapidly unless armed with the proper equipment, so you need to scour the land for steam vents, caves, shelter, or you know, Eat some raw red hot chili peppers to keep things spicy and warm. Just remember the drawbacks. The other one is a small one-man hovercraft, the Snow Fox, which you can build to traverse the vast snowy landscapes. I mean landscape, as in singular landscape, because there is exactly one area where it makes sense to use your otherwise hyper cool looking floaty bike. And that's kind of a recurring theme in this game. See something cool? Well, get ready, cause you're never going to see it again. The Snow Fox? Really awesome. Use it once and forget about it. Robot Spy Pangling? Yeah, boy! Drop it like maybe 5 times to get a few resources that are abundant anyway. Finally get to go to a brand new biome? Sorry, only 2 pieces of worthless tech here. Like. Look at this! You wanna know what's in this fantastic looking place? A quest item. You collect it once and then never ever come back. And it's a shame because most of the scenery looks incredible. Maybe even better than in the first game. Wouldn't it be sick if you need to build a forward base here that gets attacked from time to time and you have to fend off giant lizard fish people or something? I'd love it, but instead what we got is... Ruby Land. Whoa, looks Gems. dazzling. I bet something exciting must be. Oh, look, 
It was three buttons. That's... That's it. Three buttons. Okay. So yeah, I feel some of the biomes, despite looking amazing, definitely could have been utilized better. And while on the topic of utilization, let's talk about your underwater vehicles for a second. Oh my fucking god. So here are the modes of transport from the first game. The Sea Moth. Fast, sturdy, looks sexy, everybody loves Sea Moth. Cyclops. Big boy. Goes deep and hard. Slow. And steering sucks salty balls. Prawn suit. Transform yourself into the badass aquatic anime mech warrior you always dreamed of being. Now here are the vehicles from the new game. Sea truck, pretty neat, decent armor and speed, and can be expanded like a human centipede with a number of add-on modules. Prone suit, why is this still in the game? Has it been changed since the original? No, not really. It's still the same old shiny wicked suit of armor. But while in the first game it was almost impossible to get to some key areas without it, here it's more like, sure, you can take it. If you prefer to do things way more slowly and awkwardly, you can easily reach the deepest points in the game with your much more maneuverable sea truck. And even the rare materials that you had to drill out with the prone suit in the first installment are now just casually lying around on the ocean floor. I feel like the goal probably was to enable the player to choose between the preferred mode of transportation, but in this process, the trusty old prone suit was rendered obsolete. Because of Sea Truck, the new underwater vehicle in the game. And it sounds great in theory. Initially, you only start with a cockpit, then later on, you can fabricate other modules that you can latch like a leech onto it, in exchange for some performance. At first, I said, yeah, what a concept. but too bad the modules aren't good for jack shit. An aquarium module that automatically sucks fish? Why? Why would anyone need that? How hard it is to catch fish with your bare hands. Not that hard. Docking module? You can now carry your prone suit around. Yeah, but carry it where? We already discussed that there's sadly below zero use for it. Storage module? I guess. But the fabricator module, the only module that's borderline useful, also comes with storage. So what gives? Alright, alright. Maybe I sound a bit too harsh. But that's only because the first game set the bar pretty high up. There are a couple of nice additions to this installment though. New and creative enemies, fearsome leviathans both on the sea and underground, land bases are a thing now, and there's a way to get high deep. The music is also outstanding. The first one had excellent tracks as well, but this time it's our boy, Ben Pronti blasting bombastic beats, whom you should be familiar with if you played FTL or Into the Breach. And while there are no outright bangers, the tunes do add a special seasoning into the mix. And since we're talking music, the jukebox, a new addition to your bass, is also worth a mention. While paddling around wreckages, you can now collect discs. Each contains one song that can be played at the jukebox. And with well-placed speakers, you can have music blaring throughout your bass. And that's about it for innovations. So here's the conclusion. The two games are similar. Very similar. Too similar. In fact, they are so similar that I bet you didn't even notice that I was showing footage from the first game on both sides, did ya? Below Zero is a solid game. It's engaging, enjoyable and entertaining. But it suffers from being almost identical to the first game. You talking to me? Sure, the map changed, some minor tweaks and assets were added, but does that turn it into a worthy sequel? It began its life as a DLC, and it shows. It's understandable, 
but also unfortunate that it doesn't dare to experiment or stray away enough from the original to be recognized as its own unique thing. By now, the novelty of the original has worn off, and sometimes it's not enough to slap a fresh coat of paint on something which has already started to weather away. You sometimes need to reinforce and revise your foundation. So, here's the final question. Subnautica, below zero, does it sink or swim? On its own, it definitely holds up. It's a top tier exploration game. If you played the first one, yes, it's still good fun. But don't hold your breath for any big surprises. Maybe try the original first if you are new to the franchise. As for any future installments for the series, I just hope that Unknown Worlds Entertainment grows a pair of massive glowing grapevine seed clusters and takes some daring risks. And to all of you guys, thank you for watching and happy diving in the frozen abyss below. Until next time, bye!